Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to <laughs> tell you... I don't know why I did that with my hands, but I'm here to tell you about everything that's happening in Missoula. I got a couple guests on this morning as well. I got dubbing stuff. I got a fun throwback video that uh, I'm sure if you've uh, seen it on our Facebook page, you'll see it here today on MCAT, and also the uh, highlight episode from Season 2, Episode 1 of Dude I Just Drew. We got Katie Jewell, and we got Sienna Solberg on here today. They're going to be talking about SpawnCon and Spark arts program which is happening tomorrow all day all throughout the city of missoula so let's kick things off the weather is looking a little chilly this is the first morning i saw my breath it's you can see uh 46 degrees currently your highs can be 75 your lows can be 47 um saturday you're going to continue up with those highs in the 70s sunday looks like the highs are going to be in the 80s again so we're going to see a little more peak of some of the warmer weather so this is a perfect weekend to get out and about and even perhaps wear a sweater during that time as well it is perfect sweater weather for some people of course you know some people still wear sweaters uh during the summer um that just happens that way okay in local news expect some construction near the missoula fairgrounds as they are building trails uh, in connection with the uh stephen avenue and russell street projects and give people a more direct route to the fair the fairgrounds has spent a projected 19.5 million dollars 1.15 million dollars have been put into connecting the milwaukee trails um no no the milwaukee trail is uh the one that was just open recently that which is under the russell uh Russell Street, um, but also this is going to be part of the thing, and one of the things is, as of yesterday, the project may be completed by December of this year, almost seven months earlier than expected. So these are some improvements to trails to the Missoula Fairgrounds. They want to provide a safe um, alternative transportation method to getting to the Missoula Fairgrounds. State news, if you're having problems with bison crossing the highway or just uh, lack thereof, um, you can blast ACDC. A according to the Gallatin County Sheriff's of uh, Office, says bison herding is all the day's work for Sheriff's Deputy in West Yellowstone near uh, Boundary with Yellowstone National Park. Hell's Bells has been exceptionally effective in shooing the bison who tend to move when you honk your horn, but sometimes they just need a little bit more uh, to nudge them along. In national news, after uh, Michigan passes a flavor ban on e-cigarettes, uh, the Trump administration has jumped on board the bandwagon. The Trump administration said on Wednesday that it would ban the sale of most flavored e-cigarettes at a time when hundreds of people have been sickened by mysterious lung illness and teenagers vaping continues on the rise. The food in the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, would outline a plan within the next coming weeks for removal of flavored e-cigarettes and nicotine pods from the market, excluding tobacco flavors, which may be which many e-cig companies are on board with. Uh, last year, the FDA retreated from the threat to prohibit the sale of e-cigarettes as the increased rate of teenagers' uh, use took public health experts by surprise. Public outrage stoked by accusation that Juul Labs was deliberately targeting youths led to the company to voluntarily stop shipping most flavored pods like mango, cucumber, to thousands of retail locations across the country. About one quarter of the nation's high school students were reported vaping in the last 30 days. Uh, in this year's annual survey, from up to uh, which is up 20% from last year. Uh, the company Jewel Lab has taken the flavored e-cigarettes off the shelves, but online sources have been uh, popping up, putting this issue out of their hands. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have urged people, uh, especially non-smokers and teenagers, not to vape at all. And the CDC has even recommended that cigarette smokers trying to quit should not consult a doctor, uh, should consult a doctor rather than pick up the e-cigarette. The CDC will also talk in front of Congress on September 12th, 24th to provide information on e-cigs and related illnesses and deaths associated with them. All right, so that's pretty much it for your news. I have an art clip for you guys, and this is going to be happening all the way until uh, September 21st, and this is at the Missoula Art Museum. And when I come back, I'm going to have Katie from uh, Home Resource talking about SpawnCon, so stay with me.
Hey guys, we're here with Katie Deal. She's the executive director at Home Resource, and she's here to talk about SpawnCon. SpawnCon is happening this weekend. They've been doing it for 15 years. This is the 15th year that SpawnCon has been doing it, and it's going to be at Home Resource. It is. From 9 to pretty much 6 p.m., but the main activities for a lot of people to go there are basically from 11 to 4. Yep. And this is a great opportunity for people to come together and use recycled material to create something brand new, hence spontaneous construction. So do you want to talk a little bit more about what people can expect from this event? Sure. We call it the Festival of Creative Reinvention. We have 26 teams. They have seven hours to build with materials from the store. So items that might have been thrown away are transformed into functional and artistic pieces. The process is amazing to watch. We love to have people come on down and to encourage that. We have food trucks, we have music all day, and we have tons of art activities from reused items for kids of all ages as well. Those yep. two start at 11 and they'll wind down a little after five. And Home Resources is a great resource for a lot of community members who want to donate some of the old material. Let's say you build a fence, and you have some old fence material, Home Resource will take it. Bring it on down. A lot of great stuff. They want to reduce the landfill and there, and also, I know that Home Resource is working with the city of Missoula to try to kind of zero waste by 2050. Yes, yep. we are a big part of Zero by 50. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. We also do education in the community around how to reduce waste. Nice. Yeah. So, um, more of this event, I heard you were talking a little bit about music. So, there's some music going to be happening there as well. For sure. We have a DJ in the morning, then we have kid and youth uh, string orchestras playing in the middle of the day, and then we have three bands lined up. And they are. West Fork, New Old Future, and Straw Hat Riots. Nice. We also have a moment where we do found sound, so the community gets to play instruments made from items at Home Resource. Oh, that's really cool. It's fun. I mean, I remember there's so many cool things they have with Home Resource. I remember one year there was like a spray paint kind of uh, yes. dealio, and there was also like art associated with basically throwing paint at a wall yeah. from a certain distance. <laughs> and there's always something different every year, always something really cool to see. Um, each organization, which, you know, they're always looking for teams, the volunteer yeah, and stuff like that. So um, if is it too late for people to sign up? We're pretty full on teams. We could do a general team if someone was interested, let us know today or register on the website. And uh, we are always looking for volunteers too. Nice. Yeah. All right. So once again, when is this event and where can people find more information? So it's at Home Resource. It's tomorrow, Saturday, September 14th. It starts at 9 a.m. If you're a team, you got to come earlier. And we're at the corner of Russell, Wyoming, www.homeresource.org. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything thank else you. you want to mention? I think that'll do it. Awesome. Hope well, to see you there. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and we'll be right back. We have um, Sienna Solberg from Spark right after this. So there are certain school districts in the nation where their insurance companies are basically saying, you have to have baseline impact testing or we won't insure your sports because then you have something we can compare to. We don't have that in Montana. A lot of the sports will do it. Uh, rugby did it. I think he did it with Dr. Matz yep. and the Youth yep. Rugby League. Yep. It sounds like We've Mismo's doing it. Ones. Some of the schools, particularly at the high school level, are doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The high schools, I know. Yep have been doing it. So we're seeing more and more of that and it's nice to have that direct comparison. Mm -hmm. But then if we have to go on a third or fourth time, usually Dr. Pierce and I are saying what we need now is going well beyond what the impact mm -hmm. is going to be. Yeah. I'm from Liberia, a small West African country. Guess what? Liberia is one third of Montana, 43,000 square miles. Now what's Montana? Don't tell me. Uh, 147. There you go. So, Liberia, but with a population of about 4 million people. So it's not that Liberia is overpopulated, but Montana is underpopulated. <laughs> Liberia was established by free slaves that, were, that came from this country. They wanted to go back to Africa. And through the instrumentality, through the help, through the assistance of the American Colonization Society and Governor Monroe, <coughs> slaves were literally purchased and sent to freedom.
Hey, we're back here with Sienna Solberg, and she is the director Hi. of Spark Art. Yes. So you have to say Spark with explanation point. Um, explanate ex explanation? No, ex, ex, ex exclamation. Exclamation. Mornings are hard for me, but <laughs> likewise. <laughs> but Saturday should be easy for you guys because Spark is doing an event, plural, all over uh, downtown Missoula yeah. and MCT, right? And yeah. Well, they're going to participate. They actually, their location is unavailable, but they're going to participate they have in a, the so many things going yeah, on as well. Because yeah. I know that they're doing, uh, is this part of their, uh, never mind, let's not talk about MCG. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> they are doing a play, they're doing Charlotte's Web. Yes. Which is actually part of National Arts and Education Week and part of Spark Arts. And so we actually sent all of our second graders from MCPS oh. over there to watch the play, and that's their arts enhancement. So they're doing that this so, week. So let's talk about this raffle. So apparently um, yeah. you you want to encourage these kids to go to these things. Yeah. Um, they have to go to at least five yes. of these uh, uh, arts events, Yeah. and they can be entered into a raffle. Yeah, so. it's exciting for sure. So yeah, they just need to try five different arts activities on Saturday, get into a raffle. Um, there's two tickets to MCT. There's some books from Fact and Fiction. There's some things from Upcycled, uh, Rock and Rudy. Wow. Zach is um, donated a gift card for one of their after school activities. So it's it's great. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So uh, this event basically kicks off uh, what time around 10 a.m.? It's 9 a.m. Yeah, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And so there's little art stations from pretty much down by Clark Fork Market to the Red X's. And they're just kind of placed around that area. So we have um, First Interstate Bank is going to do some African dance and drum. Oh. Yeah. And then there's Cloth and Crown with bubble art. The Five on Black parking lot in front of Mountain Berry Bowl is going to have some poetry with writing collaborative, as well as Turning the Wheel is going to have some events there. Nice. Yeah, and weaving over at Jimmy John's, some more dance, but salsa dance, nice. at uh, <laughs> Glacier Sotheby's and Downtown Dance Collective is involved, as well as um, Top Hat Patio is going to have MCT and Rosie Ayers is going to oh. be there to do some theater games. So let's talk a little bit more about Spark. What yeah. is the importance of Spark in the community and within the schools as well? Yeah, so we're an initiative from the Kennedy Center to bring more arts into MCPS K-8 um, grade level and really we're trying to ensure equal access to the arts for all of those kids. Um, level the leveling the playing field to make sure that all kids have access to arts. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, arts is such an important thing. It like is. Uh, even for the economy. I remember uh, Tom Benson gave a talk about how arts impact the economy. Like people yeah. come downtown to look at the arts, but then they spend money in the downtown Missoula area. Right. So totally. the the there's no there's a lot of that's the thing about art. It's it's it, it is very fluid. Right. It's like you don't know how much it benefits right. a lot of kids until it does. Yeah. It's like, oh, I didn't know that knowing this thing about this instrument would help me in my math course. Right. Totally. So there's just a lot of different things associated with arts that definitely need to be within the schools. Yeah. And there's, you know, arts for art's sake where you're creating something solely for the purpose of art. And that obviously has its benefits, um, creativity and that sort of thing. And then there's arts integration where you're um, learning an art form and curriculum standards yeah. at the same time. And, you know, the importance of arts, I think, particularly, particularly in this day and age, is that it's building those 21st century skills that kids need to be successful adults. Cool. Yeah. And I mean, like, I thought it was really cool because a couple years ago I filmed, uh, like, a, a, a classroom setting where uh, they were basically teaching, um, you know, national and uh, historical landmarks through dance. Oh, yeah. And so they like, here's a dance move for the Statue of Liberty and yeah. all that stuff. And it's, like, really interesting kind of, like, how they associate that with teaching as well. Right. And you remember that, and I bet I, the kids remember it. Yeah. You know? Like, it's, it's great with memory retention and and that kinesthetic learning. Right. Yeah. Cool. So uh, once again, this event's going on all around downtown. Zor Museum. You yeah. got uh, Downtown Dance Collective. Yes. You got uh, basically, uh, hey, if you're going to um, 
Saturday, uh, no, uh, if you're going to the markets this yeah. weekend, encourage your kids to come with you. Yeah, exactly. Check out some art and they might win some prizes through the raffle. I know. Yeah. There will be um, signs that will indicate where the art spots are yes. too. So look out for the signs. All right. So where can people find more information about Spark? Yeah. www.sparkartslearning.org. Awesome. Well, thanks, Sienna. Thanks so much, Scott. I really Is there anything it. else you want to say? I don't think so. Awesome. We're well, just excited that it's National Arts and Ed Week. Awesome. Thanks, well, Scott. We'll be right back uh, right after. Ooh, I haven't figured out what I was going to show. <laughs> um, hold on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Dude I Just Drew Season 2. Um, it's going to be exciting and. I want a rematch. Oh, well, well, look who it is. It's Graham. I've Martin. returned. He's returned from being behind the scenes to a challenger once again. Yeah, but I'm not going down without a fight. Because guess what? We're doing the Bean Boozled Challenge. That's this right there. A drawing that will win a girl's heart. Oh, really? How do you do that? Not really <laughs> thinking much on it, but this is all improv. Okay, I see. This uh, female f head right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Curly head. Definitely gonna get a uh, for a girl. Definitely gonna get a uh, girlfriend after this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna show my wife. No laugh. <laughs> I'm gonna show this to a future wife. She'll fall instantly. Do, do you know who your future wife is? Future wife will fall in love with you after she marries. Exactly. Uh, heart. That looks like a rear end. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, this is what I have to say about your heart. Yeah. No. Remember to keep it simplistic. <laughs> First dimension. The girl's heart is simple. No, I'm Whoa. saying that the I'm saying that this you're saying the art should be simplistic. Yeah, you're saying a woman's it. heart is one dimensional. <laughs> He's thinking really hard. I'm He's right. thinking He's really hard. hard. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> All right, Graham wow. gets the point. Oh. All right. <gasps> what does it say? It says. Oh, well, it could be Tutti Frutti or Stinky Socks. Uh, That's nice. Tutti Frutti or Stinky Socks. That sauce. one. Yeah. That's Tutti Frutti. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got lucky. <laughs> we got lucky this time, Rowan. There's a boat. There's a boat. Okay. Was that any suggestion? Or a uh, that wasn't mine. We're hanging out on the boat. Oh, there's a boat. Boat? More like a goat. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what is? Oh no, Graham. Oh, no, Rowan's makes me happy, so I gotta choose that one. <laughs> Yours just makes me anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Toasted marshmallow. Court for redemption. <laughs> oh I didn't put that in. Who put that there? <laughs> I didn't even put it in court three. <laughs> that you just got. Wait, that's the same body as your boat guy. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> kind of coming out of his shirt, but it's fine. It's, it's art. It's not supposed to be realistic. Excuse me? How do you redeem himself? He, uh, he question. defeated Alcatraz from the tyranny. This is the moon. This is the moon. <laughs> that gave me an idea. Dude, it's actually just the moon the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> is this like playing court for Majora's Mask? Where he finds yeah. out, where he finds out that the true, that the true person who committed this true actual crime was Zimu. I honestly am gonna go with Rowan specifically because um, Graham thinks he can just uh, slack off. And just 
Uh, a boat guy body on a plane? <laughs> uh, oh. I don't know. Dishwasher. <laughs> or maybe. <laughs> Birthday. Oh, God. <laughs> Bamboozled. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you get scared. <laughs> if you need to spit it out, you can. I'm not. I have to eat it. <laughs> That's why I brought the garlic you can out. spit it. <laughs> oh man, I should be laughing. This is awful. Um, <laughs> but it is pretty funny. No, oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, boys, pig eating bacon. Just cartoony. <laughs> Give it super realistic hands. Give <laughs> it. There's these little tables in the background. Or get at them. And there's like, and there's like a, there's like a person just being like. Jeez, dude. <laughs> Jeez, dude. <laughs> Why are you sad? Are you okay? Screwed my face. Like, are you just coughing in the door? You start. Oh, yeah. Piggy. <laughs> you looks cute on the top. Aww. But icky on the bottom. Ah! Juicy pear or snot? I'm scared. <laughs> Shark with legs. Oh, nice. Hey. It's gonna have about, hairy about big foot legs. That goes in and then comes back. Underwater. Wait, are those turtles for feet? Uh, no, it's just normal feet. <laughs> <laughs> try, try to yeah, make an area. Turtle. I'll never not look at turtle without. <laughs> Wait, doesn't like turtle feet? No. Ma 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 What's your excuse? Why is he asking that? <laughs> Why is he asking? <laughs> <laughs> oh! There, there it is. There's the... Oh, there's the one cause like in concern and the one on the left is like, Whoa! I'm gonna give this one to Graham because I want to see him eat it. <laughs> I want to see him eat a jelly bean. Okay. Right. okay. So you get either chocolate pudding or canned dog food. That's one of the dark brown ones. Um, you know what, you know? It's, and then, I'm, at me being me, I've tasted a lot of things in the world, so I guess I could go with the canned dog food. Do I do these at the same time? All of these? Uh, I don't know. So whatever you want to do. Alright, we're just gonna see what happens. Oh thank god. Or... <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, I, I just vomit. You broke the seal and now you get the vomit. And I... Ah! What'd you get? Vomit dog food. You did? Yeah, you got vomit too? And dog food. And dog food. Reacting. Reacting. Dang it! I need a thumbnail. I can't really react. It's like I don't know. I've tasted these things too many times in my life. I have never thrown up <laughs> one. That is pretty bad. I'm not swallowing this. Actually, I can't swallow this. Hey, everybody! We're kicking it off strong. Kicking it off strong. What a good, what a good couple, what a good couple of drawings, man. Fun. Bill zero patrons, but uh, that's fine. Feeling it. Oh God. Yeah, no, nothing else. All right. I think that's it, yeah. Well, guys, great to be back uh, for season two, and we'll catch you uh, later. Probably in two weeks. Probably two weeks, yeah. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some uh, movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for some pre-critic. Hey, from the actor who did Baby Driver, and the also the same person that you kind of wanted to punch in the face for for some reason, uh, comes The Goldfinch. This movie is based on a novel of the same name about an adoptive boy who is annied by a wealthy family. There is a painting that has some value to him that anyone can understand. It's too expensive. He clearly can't buy it. It's the only memory of his mom or parents that he got. Something like that. It's a book. It's basically the beginning of Oscar season. Up next, we got another movie. It's something that will most likely not be in the running of the Oscars. It comes Hustlers, a story about women who turn the tables on men. They have altruist intentions, probably. Jennifer Lopez is in it, so that's that. Cardi B is in it, cool. Uh, basically, it's like Magic Bike, but these strippers target Wall Street guys. Probably gets in too deep and have to navigate their way through dangerous situations. Deal with the cops, you know, try to get away with it. Probably some common ailments, but overall formula about women turning the tables on a rich, corrupt system. Uh, pretty sure these women are keeping the money for themselves. Uh, this next one is a indie film. So, hey, it, might, it's, it was an indie, indie circuit. They're doing some things. Uh, 
you know, we all like silence in this movie, and this movie, it plays a big deal. The Sound of Silence, minus Simon Garfunkel, plays Peter Sarsgaard, not to compete with the Sarsgaard family of Tarzan Avengers and blah, blah, blah. Any hoodle, uh, we have a guy who works in the loud city uh, of some city, uh, and to bring silence to folks who are also trying to solve their personal problems. So grab your tuners and get the silence on as silence is golden, but t duct tape is silver. So those are some of the movies that are coming out this weekend as well. I don't want to talk about, uh, let's see, how many videos do I have left for you guys? I have two videos left for you guys, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump right into some city council before I jump into uh, a very popular video that has been uh, airing through our Facebook page. And um, I'll get on that in uh, just about a minute or so. So, time for your city council report. Uh, kicking things off, we got uh, Brian Von Losberg, who is reading a proclamation about eating bugs. Whereas the October 2018 report entitled Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees Celsius by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and the November 2018 Fourth National Climate Assessment Report found that human activity is a dominant cause of observed climate change over the past century and whereas climate change impacts food security through diminishing access to fresh water and a change in the distribution of arable land by exacerbating drought in the U.S most fertile agricultural areas, and whereas entomophagy, is that close? Thanks. The practice of eating insects has many advantages that contribute to a sustainable food system, and whereas Montana is a leader in the agriculture industry in that, number one, agriculture is consistently Montana's leading industry, and two, Montana Department of Agriculture allows insects in their definition of agricultural produce, and insect farming is an opportunity to sustainably expand Montana's agricultural sector. Now, therefore, John Angan, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the state of Montana, hereby recognize Missoula as an entomophagic friendly community and do hereby recognize Sunday, September 15, 2018, as Munch a Bug Missoula Day. The Missoula Insectarium uh, has been hosting. Um, bug eating um, uh, kind of uh, fundraising events throughout the city of Missoula since their incarnation. Um, this is this next person is Michael Doris. Uh, he's with the Missoula uh, City County Health Department who worked with some of the college students in drafting this proclamation. So this is what he had to say. Uh, this is one of those worldwide problems that uh, is coming whether you like it or not and is something that has to be solved and we actually do have some resolution to it uh, as more and more people um, are born into the world and our population continues to increase those people need to be fed as you get more people you have less arable land on which to grow crops or livestock to feed them uh, in entomophagy uh, or an insect diet actually eliminates uh, many of those problems because not only does it reduce the uh, climate change effects of CO2 equivalents generated from both livestock and agricultural products. Uh, it also feeds more people. It has a higher uh, initial feed to output of protein ratio. It also has a much lower uh, water profile and uh, arable land use is greatly reduced as you can vertically farm insects rather than only horizontally farm as you would with livestock and crops. All right, so <laughs> yeah, um, eating bugs, um, more protein. Hooray. <laughs> so, um, as you saw uh, on the show, is that Sienna from Spark came here today, and uh, uh, during the proclamation, it's during Arts and Education Week, um, Rosie Ayers uh, talks about performance learning through theater. I teach um, somewhere between 1,200 and 1,600 students a year, and kindergartners, I get to teach things like engineering through theater. First graders, uh, solids, liquids, and gases is my favorite, <laughs> and especially the gases. Um, third graders, we do a lot of fractions. Uh, fourth graders, we do things like beavers, which are keystone animals, very important to learn about. And fifth graders, we always try to get our American Revolution unit done. And today, you're going to get to see one of my students Haley from fifth grade last year who created a parody from Shallow. Which All right, so now you're going to see that parody right here on MCAT. Fighting. And 
So there was a little taste, and you can watch the whole thing at the city count uh, city council's meeting uh, by going on to the city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. We're moving on to the next uh, topic. Um, that meeting, uh, so Public Safety and Health gave information on suicide in Missoula and how it is compared to other communities and resource have in place to help folks in need. Nancy DePastino, she came on the show last Friday and talked a little bit about Suicide Awareness Month and Project um, Project Tomorrow Montana. So if you go to Project uh, tomorrowmt.org. You can find information about everything that you need to get in contact with somebody to talk to or get involved with some QPR training. But let's talk a little bit more about that after we have uh, Nancy DePastino talking about some of the misconceptions people have about Missoula as a whole. But it's been said so many times. I've heard so many people say that Missoula County has the highest rate. That's not at all true. Um, if you, this is really hard to read. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to like kind of point out. These um, county, this is a, a list of um, suicide rate um, by county um, that I got from Carl Roston at the state. Um, the counties with the red arrows next to them have the highest rates in the state. So we're talking about 32, 39 per 100,000. The, the national rate of suicide is about 14 to 15 per 100,000. Montana had 29.6 per 100,000. That's what got us um, at the top of the list. But so these counties are having serious problems. It's a uh, Custer and I can see a little bit better on my screen. Um, Deer Lodge, Lincoln. Um, so some of those like more rural counties, Missoula um, down here is at about 22.7% right there. So we're below the state average by a significant amount. Um, so during this whole meeting, um, Nancy DePastino talked a little bit more about how uh, some of the suicide has dropped in the uh, Missoula area in 2016. It was a fairly high suicide number. It was 34 in Missoula County. 2017 was 31. 2018, 18, uh, 28 suicides. And so far of this year, um, around this time last year, it was 21 suicides. But this year, there's been uh, 14 suicides in Missoula County as of this year. There have been a 99.2% increase in crisis hotline for suicides just in the last f uh, few years, which is great because people are, are reaching out and trying to get some help from the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Nancy uh, DePastino talks about some of the factors that play into Montana's high rate of suicide. And this is what she had to say about that. Substance abuse is a big one, you know, and our high rate of alcoholism. The number of, um, or sorry, the blood alcohol level um, in suicide deaths in Montana is two and a half times the national average. Um, so, you know, these problems of poverty and substance abuse and isolation are all kind of related and you know, disastrous effects in Montana, but I don't have... Yeah, it might be interesting. Right, so that was, uh, sorry about that. Um, Nancy also went into broadened range of services and studies throughout Missoula County as a whole. Uh, rural areas uh, necessarily don't have as much uh, services as within the city of Missoula, uh, and rural areas are often overlooked for suicide prevention. So Nancy talks about suicide in terms of timelines, and... Uh, this is all have to do with people who make the decision to commit suicide and how long it takes them to stop thinking about suicide. So this is uh, something that's very interesting about uh, how to prevent suicide in the future, uh, depending upon um, how act how much access individuals have to um, things that would help them complete suicide. Very often, an impulsive act, and that's what this graph that is a little bit tough to read is up there for. Um, this is a study done of um, suicide attempt survivors where they asked how long was it, how long was it between the time you decided to attempt and your actual attempt 25 percent of those about were less than five minutes um, another 25 percent less than 20 minutes the majority of decisions and attempt the, the majority of time between decisions and attempts is very um, very short amount of time. Um, so if there is a way to interrupt the plan and the method, um, we can save lives. So, so 
one of the suggestions that Nan Nancy DeBastino was uh, mentioning is that making it harder to have access to your gun. Maybe you have a gun safe, you have a gun safe there, but then you also have a safe for your bullets, and it takes uh, a bit of time to unlock those things, so you have a little more time to think about some of the actions. Uh, suicide is a rash de decision, so a lot of times some of the, so if it's harder to complete suicide, and firearms do make up the majority of achieving suicides, 85 to 95 percent, while overdoses tend to be less than three percent effective. More of a prevention, more of the prevention has to do with uh, locking up pills and guns in a safe place. Um, second Tuesday of every month, the food bank does QPR training, which stands for question, persuade, and refer, is provided to give the tools that you need to look for signs of help. Um, many organizations in the city of Missoula are asking that the uh, people from the city county health department come down and train them at their work. So if you have a business or you're concerned about some of your coworkers and you want to have QPR training as well. You can sign up through the Missoula City County Health Department to help as well. But if you're looking for uh, more of a hotline and someone to talk to, you can go to the National Hotline, which is 1-800-273-8255, otherwise known as 1-800-273-TALK. Um, you can also text MT to 741-741. The texting number is 741-741, and all you have to text is MT. Um, if you want to get involved, if, you want, if you're interested in more about suicide prevention, you can go to Project Tomorrow Montana or uh, projecttomorrowmt.org. And that completes uh, the public safety and health portion of this meeting. I have two more video clips for you guys in a, a whole new meeting, which is part of the land use and planning. And this is part of the warming shelter that the city is proposing to help uh, move forward, um, trying to... Uh, figure out a way to uh, provide warming areas because back in 2017 if you haven't read in the um, newspaper this morning it's that they uh, back in 2017 it was the last year they had a warming center for a religious assembly in a, a church group that stopped doing it just this last uh, over a year ago which is why Salvation Army stepped in and provided warming shelter to people and also the Pavarella Center capped their uh, so resources to about 175 so and also the Pavarello Center has a lot of uh, uh, loop, a lot of um, hoops that a lot of people have to jump through. They have to be there at a certain time and they can't be inebriated at any, in any way. Um, so one of the things that uh, Salvation Army did was jump on board to help people um, provide a warming shelter for uh, the months and provide the services and have the city put a, enact an emergency ordinance to allow this thing to happen in a rezoning of this particular area. Now the city is looking for uh, a better way to complete this, but they're still working on talking with this through. Uh, but this meeting, it was basically about having groups to gather up together and to fall under the uh, umbrella and the overlay of re uh, religious assembly, but for in this case for extreme weather conditions. And not to be uh, associated with extreme temperatures, but extreme weather conditions which have are not associated with temperature, but the potential to have worsening conditions and basically to uh, incorporate hypothermia season. Aaron Pian with Development Services talks about winter as a whole regardless of some temperatures that will require a low threshold to allow individuals to go to these warming centers. I know that in the winter uh, months, at least in Montana right now, that is that is our primary extreme weather season, and we know that people's lives are at risk when they're sleeping outdoors, really from late fall, from the 1st of November through the end of March. There may be a day within that when temperatures rise to a safe level, but generally, for the entirety of that season, people's lives are at risk, and so that season is what we're covering in terms of programming and ensuring that we have adequate extreme weather shelter available, and so we won't have a night trigger or a temperature threshold we will just acknowledge that, that is essentially hypothermia season that's when people die on the streets and so we're protecting against that all right so that was uh, one of the things that they want to reword in this updated ordinance to help um, have this as well uh, Brian von Lochsberg also reflects on last year as well Grateful for the Salvation Army stepping up the way they did last year, um, and it was a, 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 I don't think an exaggeration to say, a heroic effort uh, on their part, and, and extremely difficult for them, um, and and difficult generally for uh, for the community. So, long, difficult process. Uh, uh, we're not uh, across the finish line yet. Um, uh, and you know, I appreciate um, it's it's a little 
hard that we've got to go through the two processes, the, the interim and the longer one, but I think it kind of jumps out at you that the, the regular sort of process, you know, it takes about four months uh, to get through. So um, I guess all I really want to say on that is that we've been, we didn't wait to kick off planning around this. Uh, we were doing it even as last winter uh, was ending. So. All right. So many of the things that the city did um, in terms of helping is uh, finding volunteers for the transit center at the Missoula, uh, at the Mountain Line Transit Center for the bus. Um, they were providing trans free tran fr uh, transportation from the transit center to the Salvation Army while also opening up their doors a little bit earlier for folks to stay warm inside and having volunteers take care, make coffee, make some um, maybe soup or something like that. Um, but so far, the extreme, uh, an extreme weather shelter is in the works with plans and a shelter, but it won't be built until winter of 2022. They, they plan to finish in a tw spring of 2022, but you know, it's spring, so you, it's, uh, you, it's not, it can't be used. Uh, these meetings are the reflection of the emergency ordinance that passed last winter when Salvation Army did not meet zoning requirements for such an assembly. So for all the folks needing a warm place to be, they, uh, they urged that they use a re religious assembly as a model for the source of providing sanctuary for this season. Uh, the timeline of this update ordinance is set a public hearing in September and hopefully take place immediately or go back to committee and to be brought up back in November for a December change in the policy, but they want to plan on ha opening warming shelters by November 1st and going into March of next year. So that's some of the plans that the city wants to move forward on this as well. Um, they want to be proactive instead of reaction reactionary as of last year, which a lot of people in the community have spoken concern of some of uh, homeless individuals who were freezing. All right, so we're going to switch gears. Uh, if you are on to learn more information about city of Missoula, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us where I find all my information about what's going on with the city of Missoula. Watch these meetings. There's a lot of good information on here as well. You just gotta, gotta grasp it. All right, so uh, here's a video that's been really blowing up. I didn't know it was going to blow up. I thought it was a really fun uh, rap video about Missoula, and this was made back in like 2004, 2005, uh, around those early times. I just remember it because they, it was during the uh, Missoula's scooter res renaissance that happened in the city of Missoula. So if you remember when or who these kids are, be sure to uh, uh, comment on our Facebook page where this video has dropped to over 6,000 views just in the last day or so. So it's pretty crazy. So without further ado, here is the Wake Up Missoula premiere of Zoo Town 101. Ha 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 ha. coming straight from Missoula, Montana, y'all. Woo! All right. From Broadway to On Street, over to 39th. From the tracks of the north side, up to Mansion Heights. Listen to my history lesson, try to follow. To some of these facts just may be hard to swallow. Pardon? M-I-S-S-O-U-L-A So the Zoot Town is here to stay. Now while you sit in your chair and you listen to a flow Picture yourself right here a long time ago Where instead of every morning rise and shine off to school We be nagging on the muddy bottoms of Lake Missoula Trappers called it the gates of hell in 1860 A bloody battleground of the flathead and black feet The sailors called the valley named Missoula Taku But Missoula is what we holler to same time Higgins and Warden were making note At the spot they called the Hellgate Village for show Soon followed a mill for lumber and flour And these cats watched their paper stack higher by the hour City Hall, Uno Park, up on Ryman Street A nice little joint where the town folk could meet This was way back in 1887 The second shot up in 1911 in 1895, the U of M was open. 50 cats in row. Man, you must be joking. I ain't clowning, dog. I only speak the facts. Hundred years later, now campus is packed with honeys, y'all. M-I-S-S-O-U-L-A The Zoot Town is here to stay. Jeanette Rankin, the nation's first congress lady Voted against the war, she said, no way, G 
Even though elected before ladies could vote This Azula Loco gave many people hope The M's rocked the hill since 1905 Only been replaced about three times What you see now is from 1968 Freaking dope It's made of concrete The so Wilma was built in 1921 Was constructed by Mr. Simons He named it after his homegirl Edna Whose middle name happens to be Wilma The huge dog horse is the oldest in the zoo Used to be 18 horse but divided by two It's changed a lot since 1924 But you still hear a golfer saying 444 Construction to suit the town Changing up the clothes on the roads we drive around Front ass gangsters, that's what we be The master M. Kizzy and my homie PG Pardon? We rep our hometown till we cease to exist Our history lesson's over now Class dismissed! All right, so <laughs> yeah, that was that. If you have any information about this, I would love to know exactly who, when, why, how, and be because they said so. Anyways, so those are some of the uh, <laughs> things that are happening as well. It just I just found it and I just had it. I just had to show it. So I, I dropped it on the uh, Facebook page and I'm like, this is awesome and it's really cool that it's really spreading like wildfire. So spread it around. Share it on our Facebook from Missoula's uh, Community Media Resource. But also, just so you guys know. We're, we're live tonight, starting at 7 p.m. at the uh, from the Hellgate uh, from the sorry MCPS Stadium, Hellgate versus Big Sky. It's going to be a crosstown rival game, and I got to say that Hellgate is looking like a really solid team this year. So watch out, Big Sky, because Hellgate basically had a shutout with a, a Billings team just last uh, week or two. So watch out. So. Those are some of the things that are happening here tonight. But let's talk about some of the things that are happening. There's a rummage still happening um, at St. Paul Lutheran Church this weekend, starting at 8 a.m. to about noon today. It's happening today and tomorrow. Um, this is uh, all proceeds are going to go to uh, St. Paul's Women in a Mission, who uh, redistribute all proceeds to ministries locally and abroad. Um, so this is a great way to get some clothes, get some things, and it's a nice rummage sale to uh, benefit people as well. Indoor gym stuff, Roots Acro Sports Center, Flying Squirrel, Indoor Sports Arena, all these wonderful places that you can go inside and hang out because the weather's starting to cool off a little bit, uh, so it's a good way to stay indoors. But, of course, the weather is only going to get nicer for the next couple weeks before things get a little a little dimmer. But you'll experience some of the fall foliage that will be happening in the city of Missoula. And I don't care if I said that wrong. Missoula Public Library, Tiny Tales and Story Time starting at 1030 every Friday. Uh, you can check uh, MissoulaPublicLibrary.org for more information about Tiny details and story time they sponsor this throughout the community as well new electricity exhibit opening at the spectrum discovery center starting at 11 a.m spectrum opens up for kids any kid who's um three and under you get in free it's uh 350 um experience the magic of electricity in the new visiting exhibit on its first day open to the public but they also had a new water ecology type uh uh uh, exhibit that just opened in a permanent uh, setup where they're including some clouds uh, so basically uh, some great moisture and some uh, basically how the rivers and streams work and this is a great wonderful thing but also in the discovery mission today is robotics uh, charlotte's web at the mct starting at noon today they're doing a performance uh part of spark and our arts and education um it's Arts and Education Week, and MCT is doing a performance at 12 noon today and also at 6 p.m. Uh, they're doing uh, American Children's Literature and will come to life at the stage of MCT. Charlotte's Web will be uh, happening on uh, the 12th and 13th, produced by Missoula Children's Theater. Um, 
No, no, no. And yeah, so that's happening there. If you're interested in uh, doing some cribbage and a bridge, Mizuwa Senior Center has uh, got you guys covered for that stuff. Um, starting at around 12:30 ish today, around lunchtime, Mizuwa Senior Center does some cribbage and bridge. Nerf on Turf, Mizuwa Indoor Sports Arena. 4 p.m. Friday nights, and they also do a Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. This is all about Nerf or nothing. You can shoot your Nerf guns at each other and just have a good old time. Mizzou Indoor Sports Arena. Uh, uh, you can go to MizzouIndoor.com slash Nerf for more information. The Oregon Park Allegiance Field will be showing um, Into the Spider-Verse at their uh, baseball stadium. It's... Uh, held at, f uh, they're basically going to be doing this for the next six weeks in Missoula. It's going to kick off at 6.30 p.m. tonight. Uh, gates are open at 5.30. You can hang out. It's free to the public. Bring blankets and chairs if you want better seats. Um, but yeah. Uh, Let's see, what else is there? Oh, yeah, there's the uh, Montana Book Festival. It's going on all week long. So if you go to MontanaBookFestival.org, you can find all these talks from a lot of uh, aspiring writers to uh, f uh, some famous authors and some also some local Montana authors who have made it big. And they're going to be talking about some of their work and a lot of things. I did a shoot last night about uh, women empowerment. It's, uh, it's, it was a great talk. And... There's a lot of great stuff happening this weekend as well. Ron Scholl uh, is going to be filming the Montana Book Festival. And if you missed it this weekend, you can always check it out on MCAT sometime next month. For more information about that, uh, go to MCAT.org. All right. Saturday, I'm going to skip right over to Saturday markets. So kicking things off, um, rummage sale once again. It's happening from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. St. Paul Lutheran Church is still continuing the rummage sale on Saturday morning. But also, they're doing all sorts of fun activities over at Home Resource co through spontaneous construction. Uh, SpawnCon for short, it has been an annual tradition. Contest participants in uh, seven hours to use their choice of Home Resource material to build the most beautiful, functional, and creative pieces they can dream up. Um, that's happening basically, as you heard from the interview, from 9 a.m. to about 6 p.m. where they when they will announce the winners around 5 p.m. They got cornhole, Eva Horning Park. Uh, it's the 10x cornhole tournament fundraiser for local shooting sports club. The 4-H kids age range from 9 to 19 and shoot uh, shoot local, state, and nationally. Nationally ranks $50 a team registration includes meals, beverages for team members. Top three places will receive cash aw cash awards. See website for any additional details. And it's the 10x Cornhole Tournament at the Eva Horning Park. Um, Friends of Missoula Library Collectible Sale. Collectible book sale featuring beautiful art books, sets of classic life magazines, comic books, and more at the Missoula Public Library. It's kind of like a rummage sale with books. Tell us something. Storytelling workshops at the Milltown State Park. This is a hike, but also a storytelling hike as well from 11 to 1 p.m. They will involve a three to four mile hike beginning at Milltown State Park Overlook, and they will take a lunch break from 1 to 3 p.m. And then storytelling performance will begin at 3 p.m. at the confluence. This will last until everyone has shared their story. This event is open to all ages and abilities. Missoula MCAT Saturday drop-ins are kicking off tomorrow as well. And every single Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m., kids from age 9 to 13 or 14 can also join us for some stop animation fun, creative environment, media uh, production type stuff. If your kid is interested in television, YouTube, uh, just basically making videos, but they want a little more focus and to improve some of their skills and maybe make a career out of it, who knows? Some of the kids really enjoy doing it or just have fun with uh, cameras and stuff. We'll be going to be doing it every single Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. All school year long. Forget about it. During Christmas break. Yes, we're even doing that because, hey, you know, Christmas happened in the middle of the week. So we still have a couple of Saturdays on to be able to do that. All right, moving on. Celebrating the Montana Green Berets Museum of Mountain Flying, the unique opportunity to dine with the active Montana Green Berets, Miss Montana, Tandem Jump, Fly Over, and Free Fall Demonstration, Live Entertainment, and Dinner, all proceeds hosting acti active duty special operators and their families for all expense paid vacation in Montana between deployments. And that's going to be at the Museum of Mountain Flying. They also have an ad all day event happening at the Museum of Mountain Flying starting tomorrow as well. I'm trying to speed things along as we are going to the uh, train show and swap meet at Sentinel High School. They usually do at Big Sky, but because of construction, Sentinel High School on Sunday, starting at 10 a.m. to about 4 p.m., Sentinel High School will be hosting a train show. So if you like trains, you like model trains, it's a great, awesome place to be. It's a and it's also a swap meet. 
So you go to show at Missoula model train dot org um, you can also call and contact them at five four three six one two three again that number is five four three six one two three um, and also Sunday streets so many things happening this weekend spark is doing a bunch of art exhibits for a bunch of kids this weekend during the Saturday uh, markets uh, also the Saturday markets are happening I didn't mention the Saturday markets but it's happening all day tomorrow as well but also on Sunday, Sunday Streets, Missoula, downtown Missoula will be closed off for Sunday Streets. And Higgins Avenue will be uh, hosting 7,500 people to participate in the Sunday Streets of Missoula 2018. So they hope to get more people coming in to um, on Sunday as well. Stories and Stones. Yes, more events. So go to the cemetery on Sunday. Stories in Stone is happening from 12.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Uh, 2000 Cemetery Road, one of Missoula's oldest cemeteries, presents an afternoon of living history, journey through the past as 14 volunteers narrate life stories of individuals from Missoula's past. They invite you to enjoy this vastly popular family events. Admission is free with food, beverages, available for purchase. This walking tour is sponsored through your generous donations. For more information, you can contact Missoula City Cemetery at 552 6070, otherwise known as 552-6070. All right, so that pretty much does it for the morning show. I want to thank my guests, Sienna uh, Solberg and uh, Katie Duell for joining me this morning. Uh, Spawn Con's tomorrow, and also Spark will be hosting a bunch of events for your kids as well in the downtown Missoula area. Spawn Con's going to be at Home Resource. And that's pretty much it for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I still had some more stuff for you guys, but sometimes the show gets too big. So without further ado, I'm Scott Ramp, and for Wake Up Missoula, that's me. <laughs>